We all make mistakes online sometimes. We say something we didn't mean, the intention comes across weirdly. Ah, oh, it's all a big kerfuffle. But sometimes it may not be an issue and we may be overthinking things. Anyway, g'day there guys, it's your main man Marky and welcome back to another episode of r slash Am I the Asshole? Now if you love today's bloody good episode, I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prod on the barbie and get ready for it. Let's go. Am I the asshole for telling my step cousin in a bikini that she was looking good? So my cousin posted a few pics on Instagram with her in a bikini. She's 21 and I'm 18 and of the opposite gender. It was her first post in a while. I commented that she was looking good. I thought it was a normal thing and everyone was saying the same thing. She DM'd me about a couple hours later and we had a lengthy conversation about her problem with my comment. She said she didn't like family members looking at her like that. I responded by saying I didn't think that what I said was bad at all. Am I the asshole? She's on a private account and she accepted me knowing who I was. Our relationship was always good and I thought of her as a best friend. I do plan to apologize, but am I the asshole? Is there something that I'm missing? OP has offered the following explanation for why they think they might be the asshole. I believe I might be the asshole by making my cousin feel sexualized by her family member. I could have made her feel ashamed about her body. Yeah, dude, that's just something you don't really do. Like, it does come across as very creepy. You're like, wow, you look so good in that bikini, step sis. Sorry, step cousin. Ha, <laughs> didn't notice you stuck in that washing machine over there in a bikini. Ha, <laughs> but you look good, by the way. If she felt the need to DM you and speak in length about it, how is it not creepy? You're the asshole for this one, man. Come on. Now in the comments, Puddle Piggle says, You're the asshole. I can't think of a way that this isn't creepy. Even if you don't feel like it was creepy, because it just sounds like you're commenting on her body. I think you're just normalized to commenting on women's bodies. Which is not your fault, but this is a learning moment. Even if you meant good, as in happy, in the context of commenting on a bikini shot on IG, it looks like the exact kind of comment that a guy would leave if he was trying to hit on her. She's obviously aware of how that looks to everyone else who knows that you're cousins. She pointed out that you made her uncomfortable, and instead of stopping to think how the comment would be from her perspective, or how it would look to everyone else, you kind of dismissed her. She clearly cares about you because she put in the effort of a lengthy conversation to explain why she didn't like how you talked about her body in a public platform because you're related. And you still left with the opinion that you were in the right and told her as much. I'd recommend sticking to things like looking happy or I've missed you cousin in the future. And if women say that you creeped them out, say sorry and that it wasn't your intention. Why on earth does complimenting someone make you an asshole? Is there something I'm missing? Am I naive? What the hell is going on with these comments? I'm gonna say not the asshole, but you would be the asshole if you didn't apologize for making her uncomfortable and hear her out. You obviously didn't intend to freak her out, which is why I don't think you're the asshole, and apparently there's some social thing I'm missing about why this was ever creepy in the first place. A light you're the asshole. The takeaway from your conversation with her should be that your comment made her feel uncomfortable. Hear her and not argue the rightness of what you said. Your intention was not to make her feel that way, but that's what happened. Don't comment on her body moving forward and maybe apologize? You're the asshole. Don't comment on your cousin's bikini pics. It's weird and creepy. I'm gonna say not the asshole because it sounds like this was a case of her reading your comments in a tone that you didn't intend, which is easier to do via text. Sounds like you're taking the right approach by apologizing, and I would just refrain from comments like that in the future, even if they are with the best of intentions. Yeah, I agree with this. You meant no harm by what you said, but she took it the wrong way. Apologizing and explaining what you meant is the best way to handle this. Intentions only matter so much. He made her uncomfortable. He should apologize and avoid doing it again. That's literally why I said to apologize and explain that he didn't mean for it to come across as that. From what OP said, he commented it sounds like a normal thing that someone would compliment someone with. He made her uncomfortable without knowing that it would, and it gets to the point where anything could make someone uncomfortable, so he was in the wrong and admitted to that, but at the same time it isn't his fault. It is his fault. 
Having good intentions doesn't make her feeling uncomfortable not his fault. Saying she took it the wrong way is dismissive. And now on to the update. First, I want to say thank you to those who helped me figure out what I did wrong. I should have known that my comment could have weirded her out and sexualized her. My family visited her family for Easter, and I got to talk to my step-cousin. I asked if we could go somewhere to talk in private, and she agreed. I started out the conversation by first saying that I was sorry for leaving that comment, and I should have stopped arguing with her and listened to her. She thanked me, and we talked for a while about how the comment made her feel like an object, and how she started to wonder if the rest of my family looked at her like that. I again said I was sorry, and I won't comment anything like that anymore on her page. She hugged me and accepted the apology. Again, thanks for helping me find the error of my ways. It was interesting to see the reasons for not the asshole and you're the asshole. I felt that instead of thinking that I was in the right and not doing anything, apologizing and talking to her would make both of us feel better. Thanks, guys. Now in the comments, and that's on growth as a human. Good for you. It's amazing how communication and having a conversation can resolve so many of these situations in a positive and drama-free way. I'm glad that it's all worked out though, and OP still has a nice relationship with her cousin. Not gonna lie, I read the first post and didn't think you were an asshole. You said in the comments that you compliment her on her other posts as well, not just the bikini one. If anything, she's sexualizing the comment because it's coming from her male step-cousin. Obviously don't do it in the future because she's not comfortable with it, but I don't think you're an asshole for complimenting family. What matters the most is that you both can put it behind you. I'm glad everything worked out, and I hope you and your family enjoyed the holiday. Our next post is by user Reaper0207, titled, Am I the asshole for banning my son from going to an Irish school? So long story short, me, male 30, and my fiance, female 27, have a near two-year-old boy, and we're at the stage of talking about what school we were going to send him to. So she wants to send him to an all-Irish school where the kids learn all the subjects through Irish. Her reasons are that it's a good school with smaller classes, so only 20 kids in a class, and her cousin's daughter might be going there as well. But the public school in our town is just as good, and yeah, the class sizes are around 25 kids each. My reasons against it is Irish as a language is basically dead, and nearly everyone in Ireland speaks English as a first language. There are a few towns out west that I've heard of that speak Irish exclusively, but here on the east coast, I've only known a handful of people that speak it at all, and never on a daily or even weekly basis. To me, the language is useless as a skill, and it'll make him put effort into something I deem as useless in the real world, where he could be putting effort into any other subject or even a different language. Her argument is that it's great if a kid learns to experiment with language at a young age, and I agree. So I suggested he go to a French-only school if the language thing was so important to her as he could possibly use it in the real world. She didn't like this and started screaming at me that this is happening and to get over it. Now, I never put the foot down in our relationship. I admit that she is the boss in this relationship, but this is one of those times that I have and it's not going well. Just to add, neither she nor I or any other family member including extended family members or any of our friends speak a lick of Irish, so it's not a remember your ancestry type thing. And if she wants him to learn it, we have to take an Irish as a subject till we pass our junior cert anyway. He'll be about 15 then. Am I the asshole? Edit a couple mistakes, edit two for the couple of people calling me an asshole because being multilingual is easier to learn another language, I addressed that with her, and I said he could go to the French school. At least granddad is French-Belgian, and his sons, my half-brothers, could speak it with him. Edit three, my son will learn Irish for a minimum of 10 years through normal schooling. That's not the issue here. It's that he will have to learn all of his subjects through Irish, and even though there are some fields of employment where that is a requirement, it's a very small field and not worth the effort in my opinion. OP has offered the following explanation for why they think they might be the asshole. I might be the asshole because this seems important to her for reasons she might not be expressing great, 
and I'm not sure if I should stop this. Honestly, I'm gonna go not the asshole for this one. I feel like you need to have a say in your child's education also. And by the sounds of it, both of you are not of any particular Irish heritage. You just happen to be living in Ireland. I lived in Ireland for almost an entire year. I met a lot of my family. I see how passionate they are about speaking Irish. And I see how passionate a lot of people over there are about keeping that language alive. I can see why they would be very pissed off at you for not wanting to send your son to an Irish school to help keep that language passed on to the next generation. No one should be making unilateral decisions when it comes to your kid's education, and she needs to be forthright with her reasons as to why she wants the kid to go to the Irish school because what she's said so far is not acceptable. Why should you have to respect her reasons when she won't give proper ones, and why does she not respect your decisions when you're saying, hey, here's a bunch of reasons as to why French school would be better than Irish. I don't know, complicated issue this one, but I'm going not the asshole. Now in the comments, Lewin Ireland says, Being bilingual actually makes learning a third easier. As a Welsh guy, I've got to lean slightly to you're the arsehole. It's terrible when a country loses its language. The child will learn Irish either way. It's not the same situation as Welsh at all. It is sad that Welsh is dropping though 100%. Eh, studying Irish in school is different from going to a Goyle school but it is in no way comparable to the Welsh language. Now, my family are West Coast, so maybe we're different, but we all speak Irish very well and went to English, as in England, schools. Yeah, it's definitely regional. My uni friends from Salt Hill and Cork were on a different level than the Dubliners. No real dog in this fight. Grew up in the States, so I just say Gia Chwech, and whatever X is Adam Dom means, and I get appropriate kudos. You're the asshole. You're preventing your child being multilingual. 10% of Irish civil service jobs are reserved for Irish speakers. You also get bonus marks on your Leaving Cert exams for doing them in Irish. There are even EU jobs available for Irish speakers. Yeah, but you learn Irish regardless. You get 20 bonus marks, not per subject, but altogether. This sounds good in theory, but if you're learning absolutely everything in Irish with no support at home, you're going to lose marks in other areas. If they were a multilingual home that spoke Irish, absolutely fair enough. But they only speak English and have no Irish, so they cannot provide the vital support the child will need. Not the asshole at all. I actually went to an all-Irish primary school. Everyone in my family at home spoke English, nobody had good Irish whatsoever, whereas other kids in my class would speak both Irish and English at home. This led to me being very, very behind, and so I went to an English secondary school where I was again behind, because I still hadn't a clue what was going on. I completely understand your wife's point of view, and if she's going to make this decision, she needs to learn Irish herself so she can speak it at home and help with homework. I have two younger siblings who went to an English primary school, and even helping them with their homework is hard enough. Now imagine trying to do that in a language you don't understand. All through primary school, I needed extra help, which included after-school support and out-of-class help, which was in English, because I genuinely couldn't understand most of what we were learning. Why my teachers and family thought I'd somehow get it at some point is well beyond me. By sixth class, my Irish spelling was so bad, my teachers started giving me first class Irish work instead of what the rest of the class were doing. But sure, I'd be ahead of everyone in secondary school when it came to Irish, right? Not at all. I got a D in Irish in my leaving cert. As for English, I was somehow amazing, which is also beyond me. I guess it was my time to shine in school. Anyway, if you're going to send your kid to an Irish school, you'll need to be a bilingual family at least, and be able to understand the homework, etc. Not just learn basic Irish. You'll need to be at the same pace or further than your child. Thank you. The amount of people who apparently want OP's child to sacrifice their future to save the Irish language is astounding. I'm quite sure half of them wouldn't like it if they were put in this situation. This is not a situation of being bilingual. OP, not the arsehole. And now back to the post, final update. So I took what some of you said and sat the fiancé down and asked her to give me one good reason at all why he has to go to an Irish school. 
After a bit of back and forth, it was about her cousin sounding a bit snobby and shocked that we wouldn't send our kid to an Irish school. Then she admitted it's pretty useless to learn it, and she just wanted him to go there because her cousin was making fun of her. That, to me, is not a good enough reason. Since then, we've completely given up on the Irish school. I do like the idea of him learning a useful language, so we will be looking into the French school. At least then I can help him with his homework, as I can speak passable French. For all the doomsayers saying that I'm the reason your language is dying, no I'm not. I'm not stopping you learning a language that only 1.7% or 70,000 people in Ireland speak regularly. You want to learn, go ahead. No one's stopping you. To me, that language is barely alive and not worth saving. And now on to the update. So I saw a lot of people that were mostly angry that I called Irish a dead language, and that it was sad that I don't have any feelings towards my heritage and national language. And to be honest, that isn't going to change anytime soon. But I have seen how passionate some Irish people are about it, and to be honest, I don't want to try to take that away from my son just because my feelings on the matter are stunted. So what I have done is, I've applied to a French school, and have started speaking French at home, and when we visit my mum's brothers and stepdad. Stepdad and brothers speak English. And I've also applied to the Irish school. Mum says that if he chooses to go to the Irish school, she will try to learn it to help him. And when it comes closer to the time, I will let my son choose which one he goes to. He's a bit young to choose now. If it turns out that speaking Irish is something he wants, I'm not going to stop him. And if he says that he wants to go to the French school and wants to learn Irish, I will get him in an out-of-school tutor and vice versa. Thank you for helping me see that my issues shouldn't be passed to my son, and I will do better in the future. Now in the comments, Veterinarian Oak 9857 says, Being bilingual in any language is good. As someone who went to an all-Irish speaking secondary school, however, I would really consider it for secondary. At the very least, you get a percent bonus for completing your exams in Irish, and it can have significant advantages when you go to university in terms of subsidized housing schemes. I'm guessing that you're in Dublin. If you put all the language considerations to one side, sending a child to an Irish language primary school is a way to reliably place them in a social mix that takes education seriously, similar to what you would get in a fee-paying primary school, but without forking out over 5,000 euros a year in fees. That's one of the main reasons they're so popular among parents who themselves left school unable to speak Irish after learning it for 14 years. It is good that you're looking into making sure that your son is bilingual. I wish my dad would have thought of that when I was a kid. By the way, the Irish language isn't dead or even dying. 40% of Irish people, not including expats, speak it to some degree, mainly in Galway, parts of Clare, and most of Donegal. This is your culture a culture that people fought and died for. Make sure your son knows that there's something worth knowing west of Dublin because you seem to have forgotten. Anyway guys, I think that's where I'm going to end today's video. If you did like it, tell me what you thought about it down in the comments below, and make sure to just interact with everyone in this community. I love each and every one of you that I get to see on a daily basis. And don't forget, if you are a Patreon subscriber, I love you. You're on the screen right now with the YouTube members as well. If you see yourself, give yourself a pat on the back. You guys help me continue this YouTube journey. You keep me going. I see you guys everywhere. I see your messages, and thank you so much for for supporting me. I really love every single one of you. But with that all said, I'm going to be signing off now, guys. I hope you have a good day, night, sleep, whatever you're up to, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.